evening. You're watching Breaking News. I'm Rishika Barwa. This Friday night, we're going to talk about the two cold-blooded killings in Kashmir in two days. A 36-year-old government employee, Rahul Bhatt, shot dead in his office, the Tehsil office in Badgam yesterday. Today, Riaz Ahmad Tokar, a special police official with the Jammu and Kashmir police, shot at point-blank range by terrorists in his own home in Pulwama. Protests are being held in several parts of Jammu and Kashmir since last evening as Kashmiri pundits are now demanding safety in the wake of the killing of the 36-year-old government employee from the community. The police had to resort to fire tear gas shells, hit them with batons in order to control the crowds. In several parts, Kashmiri pundits have, well, left their transit camps. They've blocked roads, they've raised slogans, all of this against the current administration and against the BJP saying that this government has failed them. Over 4,000 Kashmiri pundits, remember, are living in transit camps in various parts of Kashmir after they were given government jobs under a special employment package that was launched in 2010. Many are now saying that they were made scapegoats. There is palpable anger on the streets with many Kashmiri pundits saying that this government too has failed them. Listen in. माइग्रेंट एम्पलाइज गाड़ी के अंदर काम कर रहे हैं हम इस दुखी गड़ी में हम उनके परिवार के साथ खड़े हैं तो हम इसको कंडेम करते हैं इस शेमफुल इंसिडेंट को कंडेम करते हैं और इसके साथ साथ हम गवर्नमेंट से भी अपील करते हैं कि अगर उन्होंने हमें यहां पे लाया हुआ है क्या यही हमारी रिहेबिलिटेशन है जो राहुल भट्ट का जो कत्ल किया गया है उसके पीछे हम कहते हैं कि वो क्यों किया गया हम लोग को क्यों मारते हमारा कसूर क्या है फ्रॉम द मोमेंट यस्टरडे व्हेन वी गॉट द न्यूज़ राहुल वाज किल्ड एंड वी स्टेज प्रोटेस्ट हियर और वी सैट हियर आवर कम्युनिटी majority community muslim brothers from the shekhpura they stood shoulder to shoulder with us they were even supplying water supplies and they ensured that this is the collapse or this is the morning for whole of the community mujhe yahi kehna ki government ka aakhir plan kya hai government aakhir chahti kya hai kal rahul ji ko wo office mein magistrate ke office mein nahi bacha paaye to hum jaise logo ko jo kashmir valley mein overall gulmarg pahalgam anantnag south udi ji so seething anger there amid uh, the Kashmiri Pandit community who are out on the streets protesting in different parts of Jammu and Kashmir asking questions on whether if a government employee isn't safe in a government office then who really is. Well, joining us on the broadcast, uh, my first guest tonight is uh, Bittaji Bhatt, he's Rahul Bhatt's father. भट्ट साहब एन डी टी वी से बात करने के लिए बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया ये जिस प्रकार का राहुल पे अटैक हुआ था ही वो शॉट एट पॉइंट ब्लैंक रेंज बहुत से सवाल उठ रहे हैं कि क्या उनकी किसी के साथ जाती दुश्मनी थी कि एक गवर्नमेंट ऑफिस में उठ के उन पर ऐसे हमला हुआ देखो जी जाती दुश्मन हमारी कोई वैसे है नहीं हमारी कौम या ऐसी नहीं है कि हम लड़ने वाले कौन है नंबर एक जाति दुश्मनी हमारी किसी के साथ नहीं थी मतलब बच्चे की वो लड़ाकू नहीं थे जब हम लड़ाकू टाइप के नहीं थे तो उसको भी कोई जाति दुश्मनी नहीं थी अब ये खाली उस बेस पर किया गया कि टारगेट किलिंग की गई आप कह रहे हैं कि ये एक एक टारगेट टारगेटेड किलिंग है आ, क्या इसके वजह से अब डर पैदा हो चुका है डर का माहौल तो है काफी लड़के कापे हुए हैं जहाँ से जिन लड़कों ने वो ताजियत की हमको वो बहुत जो भी मुझे श्रीनगर से कम से कम फोन आए उन्होंने यही डर का माहौल दिखाया बोला जी बहुत डरे हुए हैं हम जहाँ बहुत गुस्से में भी है डरे हुए भी है सहने हुए हैं कि उनको ये पता नहीं है कि सुबह जाए हम मज़ार सब्जी लाने के लिए कहीं वहीं टारगेट के लिए मतलब फायर न कर दिया कोई इतना तो है काफ़ी खूब और ख़ास इस एपिसोड के बाद ज़्यादा ही वो परेशान हो गए जी इस वक्त इस यू नो ऐसे मुश्किल के समय में आपकी आपकी क्या उम्मीद है एस्टेब्लिशमेंट से सरकार से क्या उम्मीद रखते हैं आप मैडम जी हम यही बोल रहे हैं ना हम बोल रहे हैं ठीक है हम गए वहाँ हमारे बच्चे हैं वहाँ कम से कम उनको सिक्योरिटी तो सही प्रोवाइड हो उनको कम से कम ये डर ना हो ये डर ना सताए जान का डर ना सताए हम सोच भी नहीं सकते हैं भट्ट साहब कि इस वक्त आप पर और आपके परिवार पे पे क्या बीत रही होगी देखो ना अब हम क्या बोले लड़की सात साल की है 
उस बेचारे पर तो तूफान पहाड़ी टूट पड़ा जो बाप चार बजे नहीं मतलब छः बजे आता था दस बजे फोन करके पापा कब आओ अब वो कभी नाम नहीं सुने कि कल से देखा नहीं उस बेचारे का तो आप खुद ही समझते हैं ये तो समझ सकते हैं नहीं बिल्कुल हम हम समझ सकते हैं और आखिरी में मैं सिर्फ आपसे यही पूछना चाहूँगी आप आप कुछ मैसेज देना चाहेंगे कुछ सरकार से मांग करना चाहेंगे बस आपके मा, आपके माध्यम से यही कि जस्टिस होना चाहिए इसमें इंक्वायरी होनी चाहिए प्रॉपर इंक्वायरी अगर बंदे तहसील ऑफिस था दो बंदे आए बाजा आते हैं अंदर पिस्टल लेकर अलाम पिस्टल सिक्योरिटी तहसील ऑफिस में तो एटलीस्ट श्रीनगर में हर एक ऑफिस में सिक्योरिटी है तहसील ऑफिस में भी शायद होगी मुझे पता नहीं है और पुलिस स्टेशन वहाँ से कोई बीस गज दूर है मतलब दीवार उसकी लगती है पुलिस स्टेशन के साथ तो पांच शाट मारे गए पांच फायर किए गए तो उसकी आवाज कम से कम बाहर तो निकली होगी ये नहीं ना कि पिस्टल शाट की फायर बाहर नहीं आया होगा आवाज तो आई होगी तो कम से कम उन लोगों ने वहाँ जवाबी कार्रवाई की होगी यही बस इसकी बात की इंक्वायरी होनी चाहिए वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच एन डी से बात करने के लिए भट्ट साहब एंड हम उम्मीद करेंगे कि जो आपने जस्टिस की मांग रखी है दैट देर इज़ इन डीड जस्टिस दैट इज़ डन एट द एंड ऑफ द डे आई ऑल्सो वांट टू गो अक्रॉस एट द मोमेंट टू मिस्टर कविंदर गुप्ता इज़ द फॉर्मर डेप्यूटी चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर मेम्बर ऑफ द बीजेपी कविंदर जी एन से बात करने के लिए बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया यू नो बहुत ही इट्स वेरी वरिंग दिस राइज इन इन स्पेट ऑफ टारगेटेड किलिंग्स ये जो टारगेटेड किलिंग्स का ट्रेंड है लॉ एंड ऑर्डर पे बहुत सवाल उठाए जा रहे हैं इस वक्त इट्स वेरी वेरी डिस्टर्बिंग ट्रेंड आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे देखिए ऐसा नहीं है सुरक्षा बल लगातार काम कर रहे हैं और पिछले एक डेढ़ वर्ष में उन्होंने लगभग साढ़े चार सौ पांच सौ साढ़े चार सौ से पांच सौ जो टेररिस्ट है उनको न्यूट्रलाइज किया है कश्मीर में पत्थरबाजी आज खत्म हो चुकी है कश्मीर में रोजमर्रा के बंद पाकिस्तान के झंडे ये सब मुझे लगता है आज ये इतिहास बन चुका है अब बात आपकी सही है कि ये सिलेक्टिव किलिंग्स जो हो रही है एक भारत सरकार की तरफ से जो इनिशिएटिव लिया जा रहा है कि कश्मीरी पंडितों को वहां पर बसाने का तो उसके लिए यह सोचना चाहिए कि ये लोग जो पोलिटिकल पार्टीज हैं वो उनकी जो लिंक है जमायत इस्लामी के साथ लश्कर तोयबा के साथ या दूसरे जो टेरिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है उनके साथ है तो ये लोग नहीं चाहते कि घाटी का माहौल ठीक बने और इन्होंने टेरिस्ट ने अपनी एक रणनीति चेंज की है पहले ये ए के फोर्टी सेवन लेकर के आर्मी की वर्दी में या दूसरे तरीके से आते थे आज ये पिस्टल लेकर के आते हैं अभी भी इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं है कि वहां पर इनके इन्फार्मर्स इनके अंडरग्राउंड वर्कर्स इनके ओवरग्राउंड वर्कर्स वहां पर काम कर रहे हैं ए, लेकिन ए, मैं ये भी साथ में कहूंगा कहीं ना कहीं सिक्योरिटी लैब्स हुआ है इतना बड़ा रेवेन्यू का ऑफिस वहां पर चेकिंग ना हो तो ये भी गलत है शायद अगर वहां पर चेकिंग होती कौन अंदर जा रहा है कौन आ रहा है उसको घर से बुलाया गया तो घर से बुला करके इस तरह की जो किलिंग की गई जो आज उनके उसके अंतिम संस्कार में भी गया था लोगों में बहुत रोष था और ये साफ लगता है कि ये एक प्लानिंग के तहत उसको मारा गया है ताकि वहां पर आतंक का माहौल द्वारा बनाया जाए जी कविंदर जी सच ये है कि कश्मीरी पंडित साइडो नो अगर आप सुन पाए जो पैकेज हमने अभी चलाया था आपकी सरकार से बहुत गुस्सा है इस वक्त प्रोटेस्ट चल रहा है ग्राउंड पे वो कह रहे हैं कि इस सरकार ने हमें बहुत वादे किए बट एंड में हमें फेल कर दिया है देखिए अगर रियलिटी देखनी हो तो हर आदमी को सिक्योरिटी सरकार नहीं प्रोवाइड कर सकती लेकिन गवर्नमेंट ऑफिस है वहां पर पता है ये जानकारी है कि वहां पर इस प्रकार से लोग आते जाते हैं कोई भी लोग आ सकते हैं वहां पर प्रोटेक्शन होनी चाहिए थी जिसमें कि हम सोचते हैं उसमें कोई ना कोई कमी रही मेरा आखिरी सवाल आपसे ये है बहुत सवाल उठाए जा रहे हैं किस तरीके से आज प्रोटेस्टर्स को ट्रीट किया गया टीयर गैस यूज की गई बेटन यूज किए गए इस पे भी बहुत नाराजगी है नहीं मैं बिल्कुल आपकी बात से सहमत हूं अभी मैं शाम को कश्मीरी पंडित्स के जो प्रमुख लोग थे उनके साथ मेरी छह बजे मीटिंग थी मैं उनके साथ बैठ करके आया 
हम भी इस चीज की निंदा करते हैं एक शांतिपूर्ण तरीके से प्रोटेस्ट जो हो रहा था उस पर लाठी चार्ज किया गया उस पर अश्रु गैस छोड़ी गई ये गलत है हमने कश्मीर में खुद देखा है कि लाखों की तादाद में जो लोग सड़कों पर आ जाते थे जब कोई मिलिटेंट मरता था लेकिन उन पर एक्शन नहीं किया जाता था आज कश्मीरी पंडितों के जो शांत मार्च है उस पर जो लाठी चार्ज हुआ है उस, उसमें हमें सोचना होगा कि कौन से लोग उसमें इन्वॉल्व थे वहां पर कौन सा पुलिस अफसर था इसके बारे में चिंता करने की जरूरत है Well, Kavinder Gupta, thank you very much for speaking with NDTV and acknowledgement there from the former Deputy Chief Minister that the manner in which this entire protest has been handled indeed is something that needs to be questioned. We also earlier spoke with the former Chief Minister and PDP leader Mehbooba Mufti. She is under house arrest, she says, and wasn't allowed to travel to Badgam. Uh, Mehbooba Mufti, thank you very much for speaking with NDTV. I want to, you know, of course, begin by asking you about the spate of killings. Rahul Bhatt, Riyad Ahmed added to a list of so many more. Uh, your your sort of first reaction to this recent spate of targeted killings? Uh, well, this is something you know. I don't have any words, you know, to express my shock because every day somebody is getting killed for no fault of his or hers. And what happened to Rahul? I mean, young guy of 36 year old guy with a kid. Same with Riaz. You know, both of them have been killed. They were attacked yesterday, and Rahul died yesterday, and Riaz died today. So I feel, as long as the government of India looks at Kashmir issue through the prism of you know religion or through the prism of security, unfortunately, we are going to see these things happening time and again. So my uh, thing is that. you know uh, uh, somehow the policy adopted by government of india is not it's not a humanitarian pro- you know they are not looking at it as a humanitarian problem they are looking at it as a hindu muslim problem muslim majority state so we need to give collective punishment to the people and that's what they are doing they are doing everything except reaching out to people so it's very unfortunate it's a tragedy you know which is happening every day here with us Right, ma'am. I I also want to ask you. Uh, we tried to connect with you on a video link. Our uh, camera team is actually outside your home, but they weren't allowed to enter. You've also tweeted to say that you're under house arrest because the administration doesn't want you to visit Badgam. Yeah, of course I want you to go, and you know, just I mean, they're allowing us to even mourn together. I mean, to to share each other's grief because. this uh, uh, doesn't go according to their narrative of dividing people they have weaponized the pain of kashmiri pandits and they are using it to further create divisions among you know uh, our society so mehboob mufti going to kashmiri pandits even before this i wanted to go, go to another pandit family where the guy was attacked and i wanted to visit shopian they did not allow me they put me under house arrest today i just wanted to go and sit there and show my solidarity with them give them some kind of you know confidence some kind of you know you know just just be there for them but unfortunately you know somehow bjp wants people to think that they are enemies of each other muslims are all muslims are you know after uh, hindus and uh, things like that that's where they don't want to see me you know going there and sitting with them and you know sharing their pain this is how you know the country is being run at this point of time you see what's hub happening in all over the country so jammu kashmir has become a laboratory for the same the bjp continues to however target you uh, you know the pdp as well as the nc saying that militancy thrived under you these terrorists who are now <laughs> killing people enjoyed your patronage <laughs> so what have they been doing for the last 4 years since they have been in direct control of Jammu and Kashmir what have they done i mean there has been spurt in you know target killings of kashmiri pandits not to talk about even muslims are getting killed every day maybe your channel has showed you know has really discussed the killing of riyaz otherwise all the channels are discussing only about rahul which is a very which is something very tragic i mean my heart goes out to his family but at the same time another guy an spo who is a muslim very young guy was killed and uh, every day we are losing lives kashmiri lives have lost you know there is no value for kashmiri lives anymore 
All right, while joining us on NDTV, we have uh, Arun Gupta, spokesperson of uh, the BJP in Jammu and Kashmir. We have Ifra Jain, spokesperson of the Jammu and Kashmir National Conference, and Amit Raina, spokesperson of Roots in Kashmir, a Kashmiri Pandit, joining us as well. Amit Raina, I want to come to you first. You've heard, uh, you know, all of the political reactions. You also heard uh, from, uh, you know, the father of Rahul Bhatt at the moment, who's, who's talked about how there is, of course, grief, but also a sense of fear that has, that has gripped the entire community. No, no, there has been a sense of fear in the community for last many years, uh, especially in last few months when 14 of Kashmiri Hindus have been killed and most of them were Kashmiri Pandit. So there has been a sense of uh, uh, this. Today, uh, what is worse is that today when government of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, especially the administration head, LG should have stepped in to pacify, to give comfort. Uh, to the minority community by visiting them because they, they it's a minuscule community out there in the valley who is always constant under uh, constantly under threat of terrorists they know that they can be killed any day so they needed someone from the administration who can come and understand their pain and uh, and make them feel safe and assure them that their protection will be taken care of and what does the administration do it goes and uh, it goes and uh, hits them it goes and beats them it um, orders lottery charge and tear gas shelling. It is, it's a very sad moment today. It wasn't expected from a government which claims to be pro-minority, pro-Hindu, uh, uh, in favor of people who are nationalists. It, it, is, it is, I think, one of the worst moments and it has created further fear in the mind of the community that if government of Jammu and Kashmir itself is not concerned about uh, the safety of uh, Kashmiri Pandit is not concerned, not even bothered to meet the people of the community who are buried, who are uh, who are who feel threat to their life. Then there's something seriously uh, wrong, and that's why that uh, around 350 people have sent mass resignation across. Uh, Right. Across very today. And this, this is another exodus which is being created by misadministration of, uh, by mishandling the whole situation by the administration. All right. It is, a, it is a mishandling of the situation by the administration and the palpable anger is something that we have seen, uh, you know, on the streets. And we played out those reactions from the protesters right at the top. Uh, uh, Ifra Jan, you know, do, you, do you want to come in here? Because there are many questions that are being asked really on the repeated mishandling of this situation on the ground. Yes. You see, uh, unfortunately, normal scene Kashmir or the idea that the security situation is improved was actually weaponized by the BJP government for electoral gains. And this was a fundamental flaw as we kept pointing out that please do not nor weaponize this idea of normal security. It is a long term issue and it will not be solved with with dazzling uh, moves like let's revoke article 370 let's do this let's do that it needs a proper investigation it requires proper dealing you know you just can't go ahead with it but unfortunately we saw that the bjp government did entirely opposite of what we told them and now we have come to a situation where kashmiri pundits went and including kashmiri muslims who joined them in protest when today they're asking the same questions to the bjp government about what happened to the promises that it had made they are met with a uh, baitens lathi charge tear gas shells some of them have even been detained uh, apparently i'm hearing um, news that some of them have arrested they now sent an en masse resignation letter saying that they do not want to live in kashmir anymore so it's any, it's, it, everything points out that it is actually a second exodus that is happening. And again, the first exodus happened when the BJP government was in power at the center in alliance with another government. The second exodus is again happening right under their nose. Uh, Amit Raina, do, do, do you agree, come, do you agree yeah. with what the NC spokesperson is saying? That this no, is in no. a certain sense history repeating itself? Yes, it is. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't agree because uh, NC itself is the father of uh, all the problems that have happened in Kashmir. Uh, so they uh, they should stay away from uh, talking about it. Uh, but the truth is uh, that unfortunately, this government is trying to cloak jihad with lack of development, and that's that's where everything has gone wrong. It is jihad. Uh, and there is no place for people who are not Muslims in Kashmir. This has been repeatedly proven. And unfortunately, the government of India is trying to say it is lack of development, lack of development, lack of development. Before 2019, they used to blame Pakistan, funding from Pakistan, infiltration from Pakistan, and free hand given to the separatists. Post-2019, they are saying the frustra it is frustration of Pakistan, it is frustration of terrorists. The fact is that 
even before 2019 terrorists were striking at will even after 2019 terrorists were striking at will and innocent people are getting killed and this whole concept is that i will hit anyone i as a terrorist will hit, hit anyone who believes in the concept of india who is who is against sharia who is not a muslim and that is what is worrying that the government should tackle jihad the way that jihad is tackled globally do not cloak it as, as under development issue and if you do it you will have right results if you don't do it then the, he, you see uh, rahul but was not killed alone by two uh, terrorists he ha they had a proper support from locals they had support from someone within the office the office was made empty the muslim employees were asked to leave and then they go inside the room and shoot a, a innocent man dead so there is a overground um, uh, there is a enough ecosystem yeah, but available but i i also want so to i also enough... want to ask i mean and it's it's a pity arun gupta the spokesperson of the bjp uh, he's having I, i'm told some Uh, audio issues in in joining this broadcast, but I think important questions that need to be asked because uh, you know, Amit Raina, it's not one but two cold-blooded killings in two days that we're reporting on. Uh, so I think it's important to talk about the general deterioration in the law and order situation and an increase in in targeted killings that's taking place. Uh, Ifra, yes, you see. Uh... Every time I hear a BJP spokesperson, he usually talks about how stone pelting has gone down, how this has gone down, and I constantly point out that terror has actually taken different phases. It's now moved into a different phase. It hasn't gone down. So, for example, right before uh, 2019, terror attacks were mostly we would witness terror attacks mostly around Shupian, Anantnag, in Tral, in those areas. now we see that it's happening in srinagar and areas around srinagar like badgam badgam is actually right next to srinagar we also say that you know while stone pelting went down the, there was an increase in the number of grenade attacks similarly we actually see an increase in the number of targeted killings and unfortunately this targeted killing is not just they don't just pick on people of one religion today itself they killed uh, riaz ahmed thokar who happened to be an spo some non locals who were killed happened to be muslims including pan walas and people selling small groceries on the road they were many of them were muslims so so there has been a general deterioration in the law and order situation itself and we cannot really run away from that and one last point mr rana pointed out that what uh, mo, you know why does national conference talk about it national conference talks about it because we as a political party had 3000 of our sitting mlas ministers senior leaders shot you know, dead by that's terrorists the, i mean rana isn't isn't that part of the problem there are so many political outfits that have tried to appropriate the cause of the kashmiri pandits has anybody really done justice i mean look at the manner in which the protesters were treated today No, no, no one has done justice. You had prime minister. I remember meeting uh, Amit Shah, uh, the honourable Home Minister, last year after killing of uh, Dr. Bindru, and he assured me that Mr. Rana, if required, I, we will put policemen with every Kashmiri pundit, but we will not let another killing happen. After that, we have uh, seen, uh, we saw Deepak Chand getting killed. We saw. uh people getting killed in kulgaon we have uh, seen uh, rahul bhat killed but uh, i can understand there are limitations to that but uh, the intent of delivering justice the intent of providing security i don't see that prime minister goes off with uh, prime minister makes a comment saying that the uh, kashmir files movie has brought tears it, it is a genocide of kashmiri pandits every indian should watch it but what has the done? silence not... today of those who lobbied for kashmir files who no, who no, came out and defended that... has has that has that silence troubled you because that's something that's been questioned by the opposition a lot no no yes it has uh, troubled us but the point is that as i was answering your earlier question the point is the government did not get up and uh, form a tribunal or sit to pass up the cases of uh, kashmiri pandit killing it did not uh, put up a commission judicial commission to find out uh, what led to the exodus and genocide of kashmiri pandit so why you they still call us migrants they do not still call us uh, genocide victims and then you have a lobby which went on captain saying kashmir files is one sided narrative it's a fake narrative today have gone silent because kashmir files depicted exactly what is uh, what happened yesterday it is it is it is a genocide which is continuing and will continue till kashmir is, is 100% is, isn't that silence really deafening today so many who came and actually lobbied for the film uh, you know have stayed silent over the course of what has happened 
in the last uh, 24 hours. And like I said, and I'll, I'll end this broadcast on that note, uh, that you know, both the killing of Riaz Ahmad and Rahul Bhatt, uh, both extremely, extremely sad. Two cold-blooded killings in a span of two days is worrying indeed. It's a story we're going to continue to track here very closely. Thank you both very much for joining us on this edition of Breaking Views. Thank you.